In May of 2020, Google Ads announced that discovery campaigns were available worldwide. And if you've set up any sort of awareness campaigns within Google, it's going to be pretty similar, but we're going to go over some subtle differences. One of the biggest benefits of discovery campaigns is that we really get to expand our reach and then use Google's machine learning to better focus on a user's intent. So this video is going to show you where your discovery campaigns can show. It's going to show how we can set up the campaign itself. We're going to go over the two new ad formats for discovery campaigns. And then we're also going to go how reporting differs for discovery campaigns compared to any sort of other campaign you're running within Google Ads. Before we dive into the campaign setup, I first want to talk about where your discovery ads could show. One option is when you're on the YouTube home feed and you're scrolling down, you can possibly see some ads like this one right here. You can also see a similar type of ad on the watch next feed. This is going to be when they're recommending which video you may want to watch next. Ads can also show up in the Gmail social and promotions tab. We're pretty familiar with the Gmail ad format by now, but these may actually not be dedicated Gmail ads. They could be discovery ads that can allow you to promote products. Your discovery ads can also show up on the discover feed. So in this example, I'm a user, I'm just typing in a query into Google and certain entities like this one has a follow button. One of the ways your discovery ads are targeted is based on what you may follow within Google. That's gonna pass on some certain signals so then when you're scrolling through the discover feed, you may see ads related to certain topics, brands, or other things that you may follow within Google and also based on other search histories like videos you've watched on YouTube and a few other factors. But now let's jump into the campaign setup. To start setting up your Google Discovery campaign, click on the blue plus button and then select new campaign. As with any new campaign you set up, Google has you select a specific campaign goal objective. To be able to run discovery campaigns, you need to choose one of the following campaign objectives. You could choose sales, leads, website traffic, or you can select the option to create a campaign without a goals guidance. Once you have chosen one of those four options, you will see the selections to choose a specific campaign type. And we can see the last option is for discovery campaigns, which is exactly what we're looking for. Next, hit continue. And now we're on the main portion of the campaign build. This is where we're really gonna establish our settings for the discovery campaigns. So first we need to name our campaign. Next, you can choose your specific locations. And this is gonna be the same options you have for any other Google Ads campaigns. Right now, I'm just gonna leave it as is. Scrolling down a bit, we see the option for language targeting. After languages, we get to the bidding portion of the setup. In other campaign formats, we typically have the option to change what we want to focus on. But by default, Google Discovery campaigns are going to run on a target CPA bid strategy. So in this case, conversions are our only option to focus on. As we see on the screen, Google Ads is telling us a typical target CPA for a Discovery campaign is $11.27. I could click Apply and add that to my settings, or I can set my own target CPA. If you do not want to go with the default option for target CPA bidding, you can uncheck this blue box right here. And then your settings will shift to use a maximize conversions bid strategy. Those are your only two options. So if you don't want to do maximize conversions and you want to try to have a little bit more control with the CPA, just click on this setting one more time and the last target CPA that you entered will still be there. Scrolling down to the next section, you can enter in your daily budget. Underneath the budget, we have our additional settings. Here's where you can adjust your ad schedule, choose a start and end date for your discovery campaigns. If you need to update any of your campaign URL options for any tracking purposes, you can also do that at this point and we have a video to show you how you can do that if you're interested. Next, you can choose which conversions you want to set for this campaign. By default, it's going to go at your account level conversions, but advertisers do have the option to set up campaign level conversions. And next we have content exclusions. And I want to talk about this one a little bit more because this is another area within a Google Ads campaign where the advertiser loses control over a specific feature. And let me show you what I mean. Google will automatically apply exclusions to your discovery campaigns. Yes, you heard that correctly. Google is going to have full control over your discovery campaign exclusions. Now what Google has said in their help section is that discovery ads should not show on three specific types of content. The first is your discovery campaigns most likely will not show up on content with repeated strong profanity. Your ads should also not show up for any content with strong sexual references or on any content with graphic violence. And Google makes one more statement of clarification about content exclusions which you see on the screen right now, and there is the link for the source below, which you can check out for yourself. But I just want to read this quote before we head back into the campaign settings. Since discovery ads appear in connection with feed-based content on YouTube Home and Watch Next Feeds, Gmail, and Discover, they don't use account-level content exclusion settings that are only applicable to websites, pages, videos, and apps. To ensure that your ads appear with content you believe is suitable for your brand, we, meaning Google, Instead, apply account level content exclusions to the main video on the YouTube Watch Next feed. 
So as of right now, hopefully this explains a little bit better how content is excluded when you're running your discovery ads campaigns. Things may change in the future, but at the time of the recording of this video, these are the options that we have. Now let's hop back into Google Ads and continue our discovery campaign setup. We can now start creating our own ad group. We can now start creating an ad group for our discovery campaigns. After you have named your ad group, we can start looking at the targeting options for discovery campaigns. And as you can see on the screen right now, the main targeting option for discovery campaigns is gonna be with using audiences. If we click on browse, we can target by detailed demographics, and detailed demographics can break down by home ownership status, education, marital status, and parental status. You can also add affinity audiences, and I'm not gonna go over every single one of these because there's a longer list, but even Google describes affinity audiences are more broader TV-like demographic audiences. So if you're really looking to expand your reach, possibly look at checking out Google's affinity audiences. You can target your discovery campaigns by life events. We also have another video on Google Ads life events and how you can really capture people in specific moments. So if that sounds appealing to you, you can click on the video link you see right now. You can look at Google specific in-market audiences. Again, this is another audience selection that has a lot of different options, so I'm not gonna go over every single one. Users who make up a specific in-market audience are considered more in the buy now mode. They've already started to research specific products. As we can see, where there's baby and children products, electronics, education, and a lot of these break down into a lot deeper subcategories. So if conversions are very important to you, in-market audiences can be a great way to go. But in-market audiences also have some limitations. I have several clients right now where even the in-market audiences don't exactly apply to what they're trying to sell or who they're trying to get in front of. So we can create custom intent audiences. Pretty much you can use keywords and URLs to come up with your own in-market audience. Make it custom to exactly which type of user you are trying to get in front of. You can do that all within the audience manager and then select your custom intent audience to also use for your discovery campaigns. And last, an option you're most likely familiar with, you can use your remarketing and similar audiences. Get after people who visited specific pages on your site, watch certain YouTube videos in the past, possibly some mobile app visits, and then you can take that one step further if you really wanna expand your reach and also choose a similar audience. Now, as I made my selection, and let me scroll down a little bit, you see an option for audience expansion, and this is common in a lot of paid media platforms. For example, let's say you already have a discovery campaign running and you really wanna expand your reach on a campaign that you think is performing very well, you can choose to have that toggle turned on and Google will try to expand that reach by, they say, 100%. But you do have the option to turn that expansion off and then only focus on the audiences that you originally selected. Next, we can see there's demographics and I'm not gonna dive into this one too much, but you can focus on specific ages, genders, parental status, and household income. But now we get to the part where we get to create our discovery campaign ads. So if I click on new ad, you can see that there are two ad formats for your discovery campaigns. There's a carousel ad format and then a standard image format. First, I'm gonna go over the single ad format. And you can see the format is pretty similar to a responsive display ad. First, enter in your final URL. Next, we can add images and our logos. And this is a required element. You cannot skip this part. So we click on the blue images and logos plus button. And I'm immediately uploading a bunch of images I already had prepped for this demo. So with all the images I can have, we can select specific options and then decide if we wanna use it as an image or the logo. In this particular example, I wanna make sure I'm using a logo, which must be a square logo. But heading back to the first image I selected, you can see that was the only one that fit the dimensions for a landscape image. Almost all the other images that I uploaded were square, and I would not be able to go any further until I had an image that met the landscape dimensions. You can select up to 15 different marketing images to use for your discovery ads. I'm okay with these images, so I'm just gonna click save. And you can see that we have certain elements in here now that my preview on the right-hand side is gonna change. So let's move on to the next section. Now we can add up to five different headlines. I have a few prepared here, so I'm just gonna add them really quick. And the next part is we have the option to add up to five descriptions. After your descriptions, you can add your business name, and then you can choose your call to action text. The default setting for your call to action text is gonna be automated. This means you are going to allow Google to pick the best one, hoping that they optimize for best performance. But if you wanna have some sort of control, you can see there's a short selection of CTAs that we can choose. Going back up a little bit, you can use the preview tool to get a better understanding of what your discovery campaign ads could look like to a user. So we can select YouTube, you can preview what your ads will look like on Gmail, as well as the Discover feed. And if everything looks good, we can scroll down and click Add to Ad Group. Now let's see what the carousel ad would look like. And as you can see, the format is different. We still need to add our final URL, but when we get to the headline and description, we don't get to add a variety of options and let Google decide. We get one headline and one description. And then add in your business name, 
Scrolling down a bit, we get to the images and logos portion of the Discovery Carousel ad. And this notification from Google is actually very important. All of the images for your carousel ad cards must be the same aspect ratio. Similar to all the carousel ads that you see on LinkedIn or Facebook, it's one image per carousel card. So if we go up to the recently used images and think I could just use the same images I just applied to the first discovery ad I created, it's clearly not going to fly. So I'm going to have to upload new images to satisfy this discovery carousel ad. So let me upload some new images real quick. And now I'm selecting each of these to use as my image and I can go back and still use the same logo. Now we have all the images for our card saved. We need to add a new headline for each additional card. Once you're done with the headline, you do have the option to change your final card URL. By default, it's going to pull in the final URL you initially entered when you first started creating the ad, but you can override the final URL if you want to send users to a very specific page, most likely to that specific product page that you are showcasing within the carousel ad. And then each individual card also has their own CTA. And again, we can leave it as automated or choose our specific CTA. If you click next, you'll be sent to the second card. Now I'm going to leave it as automated to the third and the last one. I only have those four items. I can't go next, so we can select done. And now looking at the preview tool, we're getting some idea of how the Discovery Carousel ad can look in the wild. When you're setting up your Discovery Carousel ad, you have to have at least two cards with the option to go up to 10 cards. And if you're happy with how this ad looks, you can also add it to the ad group. Since those are the only two ad formats we have, I'm gonna create the campaign and the campaign is ready to run. Whenever we look at any campaign that relies on machine learning from Google, it's extremely important that you give your campaign some time to run. You most likely will not see success from a discovery ads campaign if you turn it on for a week, potentially not see the results that you want, and then shut it off. You're not giving it enough time. Here's some clarification on what I mean directly from Google. Let your discovery ad campaigns run for at least two weeks. And you can take this next part with a big grain of salt, but Google recommends using a budget that's 10 times the value of your target CPA. The part that does make sense is that, again, this is machine learning. It takes time for this process to go and collect the data so Google knows how to optimize the campaign. So if you only have about like a $10 a day budget and you just wanted to test it out for a couple days or just a week, Google discovery campaigns may not be best for you and you may want to stick with your traditional display network models. And the last thing I want to talk about in this video is making sure we understand how reporting works for our discovery campaigns. Starting on July 1st of 2020, any clicks on your discovery campaign ads that do not send users directly to your website are going to be counted as engagements, not clicks. So one of the placements for your discovery ads is Gmail. With Gmail, you are only charged for the first click on your ad. Any click on the Gmail ad that sends users to the website, you are charged for that first click, and that click to the website will show up in the clicks column. If the first click of your discovery ad on Gmail is just to expand the ad, you're still charged for that first click, but that action is going to be reported in the engagements column. So I'll go a little bit deeper and describe each of the columns and how they will affect how you view the performance for your discovery ad campaigns within Google Ads. So a click for a discovery ad campaign is taking all the clicks from your ad when it was shown on YouTube and the Discover feed and just the first click of the ad in Gmail. So when we're going through and looking at the click-through rate for discovery campaigns, we're taking that total number of clicks. Again, the combination of all the clicks from YouTube and Discover feed plus just the first click from Gmail and dividing it by how many times the ad was shown. So when we're looking at the average CPC for your discovery campaigns, you're taking the total spend from whichever view you're looking at divided by the total of first clicks on your Gmail ad plus all clicks from the YouTube and Discover placements. Interactions is the combination of all paid clicks on your discovery ad. So this doesn't include any engagement type of action, just the ones that you're paying for. And then for interaction rate, we're taking those interactions, again, just your paid clicks, and then dividing it by the number of times your ad was shown. Hopefully now you have a better idea of how Google's discovery campaigns can better help you expand your reach and showcase your products to a very specific audience. Remember, these campaigns need time. We need machine learning to have enough data to actually make the proper decisions to optimize the accounts. So hopefully you have some better ideas of how you can utilize this if you're really focused on expanding your reach to a new audience. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week, so if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.